Rocks What greater use could there be for the modern art form of animation than the creation of rocky surfaces? Well, at least statistically speaking, that seems to be of the greatest interest here on my channel. I've had so many requests for an updated tutorial on this subject in the most current version of Blender. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look one more time at how to create realistic rocky surfaces in just a matter of minutes inside of Blender. We're going to be looking at two very different but both very effective methods. To follow along with this tutorial, you're going to need three things. One, Blender. Two, Rubber Ducks Rock Pack from BlendSwap.com, which is completely free to download. And three, a rock texture of your preference from your preferred texture site. I'll link all of those items in the description below. And once you have them and are ready to go, let's jump in and start the tutorial. To begin with, let's go ahead and open up a new project inside of Blender. And we're going to change a few settings to make sure that you're running the same settings as I am to help follow along. We want to make sure we're using the Cycles render engine. So if you're currently set to EV, go ahead and switch that to Cycles. Make sure you set device to GPU compute so it's using your graphics card, which will speed up the rendering process. If you're not sure how to do this, you can head to Edit, Preferences, and under System, just select a render device such as CUDA or Optics that allows you to take advantage of your graphics card. Underneath our world properties, make sure your color is set to sky texture, which will allow us to use Blender's inbuilt Nishida sky texture for realistic lighting, as you can see here. Next, let's go ahead and delete our default cube and default light. They will be missed. But instead, we're gonna go and hit Shift A and add in a plane. I'm gonna hit RX90 enter to rotate it to stand up vertically, then tab into edit mode and hit GZ1 and enter again. So now it's resting on this invisible grid floor. I'll hit S5 enter to scale up five times larger. And then I'm going to tab into edit mode and just go ahead and select my move option here underneath my cursor appearance and also select edge select mode so that I can just grab one of these edges. Next, I'm going to make a basic geometry for a rock wall. We essentially already have a wall here. I just want to make it slightly more interesting. So I'm going to hit E and then X to extrude it out along the X axis and just pull that forward a little bit then hit E and X one more time and bring it along like so. I can just adjust that to what I prefer. And now tapping out of edit mode, we have our nice rock cliff wall. The point of this tutorial I should mention isn't so much to focus on modeling because this process of creating rocky services can work on any shape. So rather than looking at how to model a particular rock or environment scene, it's just looking at how to apply it to any particular model you have. The first method we'll look at is the one that seems to be the most popular and that's using rock brushes. To go ahead and start using some rock brushes, we need to do two things. The first of which is hit control A and apply our location, rotation, and scale transforms. Next, under our modifier properties, we're gonna add in a multi-resolution modifier. I'm gonna subdivide this about eight times, tabbing back into edit mode, I'm gonna hit A to select all, and then shift E and just pull my mouse out till I see this purpley pink outline and left click to confirm. What that does is it just allows me to keep the original transform without adding too many curves. You can soften a little bit like so if you like, just by tabbing into edit mode and hitting shift E and pulling your cursor in and out. I'll right click shade smooth, and then let's go ahead and start sculpting. By switching to the Sculpting tab, we bring up all our sculpting options. Right-clicking will allow you to increase the radius of your brush and also the strength or impact of that brush. I'm gonna go and hit File and append in the rock brushes I downloaded. Now these rock brushes are from BlendSwap.com, a free site where you can share your own Blender projects and the user Rubber Duck has so kindly and generously provided free rock brushes that can be downloaded with a free account and used for any commercial project or hobbyist project that you want. So make sure to go there and leave a comment thanking Rubber Duck for their fantastic brush pack or leave a comment here thanking them in case they ever come across this video. If you've downloaded that brush pack, you can go ahead and locate it where you've saved it for me. That's in my downloads. And then we should see a folder called brush, the top folder. Inside of it, we'll see all 32 rock brushes. I'm gonna hit A and select append. It's important that you append them, not link them 
just because I did read a lot of people having trouble with the thumbnails showing up, but when you append brushes into your project, you might just need to wait a minute, but clicking on this little icon should load in all of those thumbnails so you can see what brushes you're working with. Now, all we need to do is go ahead and just select one or two different ones and click and drag. But you notice if we do that, it's quite an abrupt transition between the rock brush and the flat wall. Some people even compared it to looking a bit like a pimple, which isn't very appealing. To correct this, let's just go to our fall off and change it from custom to smoother. Now, if I click and drag, you can see it's a much smoother transition. I can also turn the strength down if I don't want it to affect my mesh quite that much. And now just as a matter of clicking and dragging, we can see instantly we're adding in some pretty cool detail. We can go as crazy as we want. This is really just the fun part. You can chuck on some music and start designing your rock wall. Okay, and there we have a very basic sort of setup for this rock wall. I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm gonna jump back to my layout tab. And if I switch over to render view, just up here, we can see that already it's looking pretty good. If I turn my lighting in my world properties just by adjusting the sun rotation, we'll probably be able to see it a bit clearer what exactly our scene's looking like. But if you wanted to use this as a background asset, maybe in just something quite simple, you could add in a material, just give it a color. And for a stylized environment, that would look really awesome. For me though, I want these to be photorealistic. So what I'm gonna do is add in a photorealistic texture. To do that, I'm just gonna be using one from Quixel Bridge. You can use any texture site that you like, including completely free ones like Polyhaven, 3dassets.1 or textures.com. But just for the sake of demonstrating how this works in this tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this Rockcliffe texture from Quixel Bridge. Back here in Blender, I'm just gonna split my view by going up to the top left-hand corner until I see this little crosshair, and then left click and drag and select instead of 3D viewport, shader editor. I'll hit N to remove that right-hand side toolbar and under material, I'm going to select my rock cliff texture, which has been imported. I'm going to tab into edit mode and go U to unwrap and select cube projection. Now we can see that this material has been applied and it looks really good. I'm really happy with that. And that's all there is to it to create this realistic looking rocky texture. Of course, if you do want to go the little extra mile, this is where we start to venture into the second method of how to create realistic rocky surfaces. But when it comes to this method, we're gonna be looking at displacement. This doesn't need to necessarily be used in connection with the rock brushes as they already give quite a solid level of geometry detail. Using micro displacement is almost unnecessary when you've already sculpted or vice versa. Sculpting is almost unnecessary if you're using a displacement map. But let's just go ahead and look at the varying results and see which one we prefer so you can make an informed decision for your own project. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and Shift D, duplicate one of these image nodes and just drag this material output down here a bit and connect the color into the displacement slot. I'm gonna hit Shift A and just add in a displacement node and drop it in between the two. Make sure that my color is plugged into height and then here in this little folder, I'm gonna to navigate to where I have a displacement texture for this texture that is saved. Set color space to non-color. And now if I go and render, you'll notice that nothing has changed because I still need to adjust one more setting. Under my settings, I'm just gonna select displacement as displacement and bump. And now you can see the displacement taking full effect and our scene looks pretty cool. It actually looks even better than it did before. If we go ahead and just duplicate this cliff, I'll hit Shift D and then just move along the Y axis. What I'll do is I'm gonna rotate that on the Z 180 degrees just to line up so we can have a bit of a canyon scene. And I'm just gonna delete this multi-resolution modifier and add in a fresh one without any sculpting detail. I'll subdivide it the same amount of times. Now, if we switch to render view, we can have a look and see the difference between the two options. So here we have one, let me just turn my light around so you can see that clearly. Here we have one applied without much sculpting detail and displacement, and it looks pretty good. We could really go ahead and just hit this little copy to set this as purely a displacement material or a new material and 
could really crank the value up on that to something like two to sort of see what this looks like. And it looks really good. So contrasted with our other rock cliff, it's really a matter of personal preference as to what you think looks best. As I said, both of these methods can be applied quite easily to any shape that you desire to give a rocky, realistic looking look to. You can simply start sculpting, add in a photorealistic displacement map, and there you have a great background or foreground environment. A few final tips that might help if you're wondering. To render out your scene, Zero will switch to camera mode, and then by hitting N, you can bring up the right-hand side toolbar. Under View, you can select Lock Camera to View. And here in Output Properties, we can just select Render Region, because I only want to render what the camera is seeing. Back in Render Properties, you can set Film to Transparent so that our background is transparent. If you want to add in any other images later in compositing or Photoshop, and then just simply lining up our shot is all that's left to do. I like to change a couple of camera settings personally. This is all completely optional, but by clicking on my camera and going to my camera properties or camera data, I can enable some depth of field so that if I turn that down, we can see a nice bit of blur on our footage. And I even like to sometimes turn up my focal length to be more zoomed in so that it creates a more cinematic look. I might adjust my lighting of my world again. And this is why I really like being able to use the Nishida sky texture. It's so easy to set different times of day just by lowering the sun angles. Finally, under output properties, I'm going to change my resolution to 3840 by 2160, which is 4K, as I like to be a render in 4K. And under render properties, beneath sampling, I'll just turn on denoising. Under color management, I'm just gonna select the look to high contrast and enter to that right hand side manual but there we have it that's all there is to creating this realistic rocky cliff effect it's that easy it doesn't take long and i really appreciate you coming here to watch and asking for tutorials on these subjects i find them so fun to create sometimes it does take me a while to wrap my head around what to say in a tutorial about this but i really do hope this has been helpful that you can use it to create your own projects and if you are able to please feel free to show me what you've made I really love to see all the work you guys do from these videos. But until next time, this has been just the basics of how to create realistic rocky surfaces in just minutes inside of Blender version 3.6.4. Thanks for watching everyone. I guess life is like a rock. It's really hard.